paper mache sculptures. Um, you can use wheat paste, which most people use like flour paste. They'll just use like flour and water. Or you can make rice paste. Rice paste is a little bit stickier, but that's good for making paper mache and your rice. So it's best to use rice in a rice cooker because then it won't get overcooked. Although I made not enough rice, so it might be overcooked. And then you put it in a pan. Make sure you don't overcook the rice because then that's going to defeat the purpose of making rice paste because it might be sticky enough to have the paper stick together. But, see how the rice is sticking to my fingers? Then you put a little bit of extra water, not too much, you can't water it down too much. And then, cook it on low. Oh. Extra water in there, and you want to mush it up really good. And just basically, you only cook this till it gets mushy, but not overcooking. And then, that's going to be rice paste. Mashing it up works better, too. Make sure to not overcook this. It shouldn't be over like five minutes. Okay, woohoo! The most common way to make paper mache is just with flour and water. Rice paste is good, it's stickier, but I guess flour and water, it's hard to go wrong with that. But you can go wrong. Don't put, oh no, ha! <laughs> just a little bit. Don't put too much. It's really easy to just. Pour, you know, a whole bunch of flour in here, and then it's like just way too much. Now, if you use wheat paste, I find it's clumpier than if you use regular. Uh, if you use wheat flour, I find it's clumpier than if you use regular white flour for regular. But anyway, so first we'll make, I guess, a paper mache balloon. This will be really easy, right? You can make a pinata out of it. Okay, there it goes. I don't know, maybe I almost... I think I want to make a long one. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, I like this better. This looks more phallic. Now, if you're going to paper mache an actual object instead of paper mache a balloon, then you want to put like some kind of lubricant on it like mostly like you want to put like what is it maybe baby oil or petroleum jelly or something because otherwise the paper mache will stick to the object the paper mache sticks to this I don't care I'm just gonna pop the balloon like for example when I made this paper mache I paper mache my shoes the, my stripper shoes and so I put petroleum jelly all over the shoes and then I um, put the paper mache stuff on. So, yeah. So, yeah. But I don't care about this. So when you tear up the paper, you tear it up in long strips like this. And you see, it's a really nice, clean, even rip. It's because I am ripping along with the grain. You don't want to rip it against the grain of the paper. Like, for example, this one. See, it's coming off in little clumps. That's not very nice. That's not very nice either. Oh, that one's okay, but no, not really. The problem with all these is that I'm ripping against the grain. So you find the grain of the paper and you tear along the grain and then you get strips like these. Ooh. That's perfect to love.
I'm using wheat paste for I use wheat paste for the shoes, but for these babies, I made these babies entirely with rice paste. But you can't really tell the difference when it's done. It's just a personal preference, I guess. Ooh, so thoroughly saturated. Ooh. First you use newspaper. Then after you use news. <laughs> Then after you use at least maybe two or three layers of newspaper, then you can use a layer of regular newsprint. You're supposed to use regular newsprint. I'm going to have to make these small because look at this balloon. It's kind of Maybe I need a little bit more wheat paste. Oh, maybe not. I'm making your floor dirty. I'll have to clean it after. Mm. This will be kind of a cool sculpture when I'm done, huh? Mm-hmm. So you want to do at least three layers. Sit, Abu, sit. Good dog. So when you rip up the paper, you might think, oh, well, I'll just use scissors and I'll cut up the newspaper. It's, that's not really a good idea. The thing is, here, get really close to it. You can see all the little, like, paper fibers hanging out of the paper. And that's really good when you make paper mache because when you make paper mache sculptures, what's going to happen is that these fibers, they get all wet and they get, you know, saturated with the paste or whatever and then they lay on top of the other papers and they like make it blend and smooth together. If you just cut up a piece of paper and then make paper mache out of that, it's not going to really blend together. It's not going to have any little hair fibers hanging out on the edges. It's just going to be a clean cut. But I mean if I'm explaining something then definitely close up on my hands. Yeah. So, I've got the whole first entire layer here done. Now, when you're making paper mache, you don't actually have to wait for the whole first entire layer to dry before you do the second one. You can just do two or three layers if you want. But we're going to have to do at least three layers. And I'm going to try to dry it a little bit, just because I want to. But anyways, in the meantime, okay, we're going to talk about these. So, remember when I told you, you know, rip along the grain, not against the grain? Well, okay, when I made these shoes, that's actually, I didn't do that, so I broke my own rule, you know, it's not my rule, it's the rule of paper mache, but anyways. So, okay, with these shoes right here, the point, ooh, okay, answer that text later. <laughs> okay, so the point of this is that it was my stripper shoes, but then I used the escort ads from the back of the stranger and like Seattle Weekly and stuff. So, for me to rip the ads would have been, like, defeating the purpose of it, you know? You wouldn't want ripped ads, you want to be able to see the ads. So, I did actually have to cut them. But, like, I did two or three layers of regular newspaper print, and then I cut up, like, the ads and put them on here. But, so, you know, I mean, you can break the rules if it's a specific reason, you know? And then afterwards, um, I sprayed, uh, like, ceramic glaze on top of it. So that was how I made these. See, look, there's the apple and the lusty lady. Aww. So anyways, then the babies. Now this I made with wheat paste. See, when you get your final product, you're not going to be able to tell the difference between if you did it with rice paste or rice pa wheat paste. I did this with wheat rice paste. This I did with the flour wheat paste. You know, so you can't really tell the difference by the finished product at all. Um, was there something specific I was going to say about these babies? Okay, with the babies, yeah, I had a baby doll. And so I put the paper mache on top of the baby doll. So remember, I was explaining the balloon. We'll just pop the balloon, no big deal. But with the baby doll, I had to put petroleum jelly on the baby doll and then make all these layers of paper mache on top. And then I painted it with acrylic paint. If you're going to paint on top of a paper mache sculpture, it's probably best to use acrylic paint. Maybe you could use tempera paint. If you use oil paint, it would just 
be really disgusting and, and it would be stupid. It, it would like make the whole project soggy and oily and it would be bad. So, yeah, okay. Anyways, now with the pregnant woman, that was um, flour paste. And, you know, I used a mannequin. So, again, on the mannequin, I put petroleum jelly on the mannequin. And then, you know, I ripped up some paper and used the flour paste and, you know, made the, like, at least three layers. I had to build her up. The stomach, I used a regular balloon and I put it, it was, a, it was not a pregnant mannequin, it was a regular mannequin. And so I blew up a balloon and I put it on her stomach and then I paper mache on top of it. And then it looked really bad, actually, because it just looked like a stomach with an erection, you know. So I had to take up, like, crumpled up paper, and I had to, like, mold it around there. And or I had to build it up, layer on top of layer on top of layer, until it looked like a nice, round, smooth belly, you know. And then the chi-chis, I built up the chi-chis on the pregnant woman, too, by um, the same thing. I balled up paper, and I put it on the mannequin's chest, and then I put layer of layer on top of it. And then, you know, the pubic hair is actual fake on top of it. And then with the Chi Chi's bank, it was again, it was it was a mannequin. It was the mannequin. I didn't build up the breasts to make them bigger. Like with the pregnant woman, I built up really big breasts because I figured she was pregnant. She needed big breasts. And like I just, I don't know, made that out of paper mache, out of flour paste and paper mache. And I painted it with acrylic, and then I, I put the tassels on. The tassels were not paper mache, of course, you know. And then I cut a hole in the chest to make it a bank, you know. And yeah, that's how that worked. Okay, so what we're gonna do? Oh, I kicked over my stuff. So one thing I did that was kind of an accident here is um, I made this. Well, you see this opening here? It's kind of too small, you know, like, I gotta cut it open a little bit. Now, this is completely dry, so it doesn't matter if the, you know, if the balloon pops now. Woo! And there it went! You hear it? <laughs> when I'm clowning, I, like, purposely, like, inflate a balloon and then uninflate it, you know? Just upset a little kid. It's great. It's awesome. Woo! Here it is! Woo! It's a big... It looks like a... Flat arm, huh? Now, hopefully, when I make three more of these, they're not going to implode before they dry. That would be horrible. So now, what I'm going to do is I've got a hole puncher here, right? Dun 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 dun. I punched a hole. Dun 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 dun. I punched another hole. Now I've got two kinds of strings, just in case one doesn't work. I don't know. I'll use the other, I guess. I've got a shoelace string, a black shoelace string. Oh, come on, get in there, get in there. Snap. I don't know if this string's going to be long enough. It better be long enough, because I said so. Looks beautiful, huh? Woo! Too much beautiful. Now when I make the other one, I'm going to tie it to this side, right? And then I'll be able to hang it over the, you know, this thing. It'll look like something really phallic hanging from, you know, whatever those pipes are. The pipes that say that I'm not supposed to hang anything from them. <laughs> but for whatever reason, the shoestring doesn't work out. I've got these that I collected from my blanket. And they're really thin little strings. I don't know. And, you know, and I think I might even end up painting this string to make it match the color of this. Maybe. Yeah, this paint, like, 
This guy I was dating, Lawrence, gave me all these acrylic paints. And Lawrence was a jerk. He treated me like Dookie for six consecutive months and then he dumped me. And so it's like, I don't want anything he gave me, but then again, it's like, well, if I get rid of a bunch of acrylic paint, you like need that, you know? But he was a jerk. I hope somebody cut off his wiener and burn it. So one year, my senior year of college, I had this one art class. It was a ceramics class, right? The assignment was we had to we had the assignment was we had to make a ceramic piece that either weighed a hundred pounds or it was six feet tall. I made a huge, like, pot that weighed 100 pounds. Anyways, this one girl in my class, she probably wouldn't like it if I told you guys this, but that's what I'm going to tell you. I, I'm going to tell her why she should, too. But she decided she was going to make a six-foot-tall penis. Yeah. Out of clay. And it was a Caucasian one, too. <laughs> yeah. This is kind of funny. And she said, oh, I wanted to make a rocket. I wanted to make a rocket. It didn't look like a rocket. Okay, a rocket would be like more like, the point would be like this, you know. She had a very rounded point. It looked like a penis. And so when we had our final critique day, it was just like way too much funny. We all have to like, you know, go around each other's piece and, and like the professor talks about it and we talk about it and then we all get to Trisha's piece and she's got a six foot tall penis <laughs> on the front lawn of the CMA, the ceramic metal in arts gallery, you know. And even the professor is like, hmm. So we're all standing around this piece and we're all smiling and like giggling but not wanting to say anything. And so then the professor's finally like, so what are you guys all laughing about? And then he's like, okay, I can tell you it looks like a penis, right? So, what can you say about this piece? It looks like a penis, it looks like a cock. I say, yeah, and it looks like a Caucasian one, too. <laughs> then everybody's like, yes, sometimes. Yes, it looks like a Caucasian one, too. Blue two parts water. Now, what I'm going to do is actually paper mache this uh, fish tank here. I know it sounds funny, but, uh, you know, whatever. It's what I'm going to do. And the reason why I'm going to do it Okay, so you see the glue in the bottom? Yeah. I'm going to put some water in here. A whole bunch of water. Ooh, ooh. What I'm going to do is I am going to make like a big, huge, um, a big huge perfume bottle and this fish tank is going to be the body of the perfume bottle yeah and so yeah so you see right there you go you'll see when it's done you'll see you'll see so Elmer's glue or any kind of glue really and then water and that's just like wheat paste or just like rice paste same exact thing Now, one thing I have to do, have to rinse my Okay, now remember the release agent? Remember that? Yeah. So, I don't have lube, like a uh, lube, like uh, Vaseline or something like that to put on here. So I'm just using lotion. That might be not the greatest release agent in the world, but it's the release agent that I have. It's the release agent that I have access to. And what this is going to do, again, is prevent, prevent the paper mache from sticking. Awesome. Okay, now when I'm done with all my layers, what I'm going to do is, I told you I was going to make a perfume bottle, right? Ooh, perfume bottle, how beautiful. Ooh. Well, the reason why is because after Elizabeth Taylor died, I collected all these magazines, you know, of Elizabeth Taylor, all, and this is a newspaper right here. All these pictures of Elizabeth Taylor, and um, 
tabloids. Most people wouldn't think tabloids are good, but um, tabloids are like newspaper type paper. And so for paper mache, tabloids would work out just fine. Anyways, so after I'm done making the whole entire perfume bottle, then I'm gonna put I'm gonna paper mache a bunch of pictures of Elizabeth Taylor on top. Because you know Elizabeth Taylor, she's famous for perfume, you know, perfume and jewelry. So I guess it's gonna be like a Elizabeth Taylor tribute kind of artwork. So yeah. So okay, so I've gotta work on the third layer. Done turning all these up. Again, I got my glue water in here. Now sometimes, oh, there's a lot of glue on this one. That's good, right? That's perfectly okay. If it's not conforming to the object good enough, a lot of times that means your strips are too big. If you get littler strips, like this is quite little, but you know, whatever, then that will conform to the shape a little bit better. Okay, so here it is the very next morning. The paper mache is completely dry. We're going to see if I can cut it out. layer on there and I'll let that layer completely dry. The thing is, when you put layer on top of layer on top of layer, sometimes the weight of it, when it's wet, can get so heavy it will sink in and it won't maintain its shape. So, that was fine. I could put three layers on when I was doing it on the fish tank, because the fish tank is not going to collapse in on itself. But now it's, you know, not in the fish tank anymore. It's on